guys, Pocky D here with uh, Kimberly Baldwin. And today we have the Arbalist with an order Adam Penny, Mike Bruni, Alex Orr, Hugh Brazelton. And your guys' movie is about a toy maker that the world fell in love with, not in the 1970s, in the 1970s, like, you know, in the 70s. And in actuality, not the best person in the world. No, he's not the nicest guy. Uh, no. It is, it's about the guy who invented the world's greatest toy and his obsession with the woman who hates him. So most and of the film, it's just him being a horrible, stalkerish sort of person mm -hmm. and her just turning him down at every... Every, every turn. Rejection. I understand that in a movie. That, that I understood is rejection. And, of course, we have the star here with us, who in actuality is a nice guy. So, guys, <laughs> not the character. I'm a nice guy. You are a nice guy. <laughs> so, and, not, and was, I'm assuming, at least born in the 70s, but didn't, you know. I actually was born in 1980. So. Oh, well, I was 78, so. Okay. So, I understand. <laughs> I was, I am. Yeah. So, you Close. guys, yeah. I like how your guys' movie, what it really is, it's like, this guy is making something for the world, but for all the most selfish reasons in the world, and finds his finds a place, except not the place he wanted, and that really was kind of cool. Yeah, it's even more selfish than that because in actuality he doesn't invent the toy; uh, it's maybe stolen from somebody, uh, and he kind of guides through life as a liar, and uh, yeah, so he's even worse than you think he is. Oh wow! So <laughs> it's yeah so. Um, the I, I don't know. I've, I've we got to watch a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. It was it was to me it was a lot of fun. I mean, do you have any questions? Here? Um, to, to be honest, like <laughs> I don't like talking time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the very few that I didn't I couldn't find. Like I like really really searched you guys keeping this under wraps very well. Mm -hmm. So from from like my standpoint, my questions are going to be very broad oh, stroke, yeah. such as like why a toy? You know, why'd you pick that versus say? Uh, a computer game or you know some other type of invention what was central about the toy well I was obsessed with Rubik's stuff my whole life and what he invents is essentially a Rubik's cube type toy mm -hmm. and I wrote a one-act play in college about that he actually started mm -hmm. about a Rubik's cube competition um, but it ties into his character because it's all about stunted adolescence and being a grown-up who is obsessed with toys and he's obsessed with a board game and the movie in our film the Arbalist it's the name of a board game in the movie that they play, and he tries to organize a date with this woman by playing this game, and she's comes with her husband and is totally not interested at all. But yeah, so it's mainly about stunted adolescence and being a childlike adult. Where did you come up with something like that? Hmm? Where did you come up with like an idea about like a grown man who's like a mm -hmm. child? Like, where did that come from? You, you mean guys who obsess over having toys and action figures and board games and a closet full of them? I would. I, this sounds a little I, personal. I, I know. It's just, this is getting a little close to home now, guys. <laughs> I don't want to find out where it's. So, yeah, you, you actually, you, you saw me in this. How was it when he, I mean, first he handed you a play, which is loosely based off of this, and you guys yeah. actually did a full. How was it where you're like, everyone's going to think I'm an asshole? Like, or did you uh, like her thing, or how how was exciting was this for you to read the script and go, wow, I'm kind of playing a kind of interesting character here. Yeah, it was really exciting to read it. Um, yeah, I think it's a fantastic character, and I never worried that people would think uh, I'm really an awful person because I'm just so nice in you are. normal life. But um, but yeah, I think um, that's I think one of the cool things about the character is he doesn't really realize sometimes how awful he's being, and he's almost a little aloof from it, which I think is kind of one of the interesting parts of the character as well. Yeah. So, And yeah, it being a period film and going like as, a, as an actor and being able to you know wear those clothes and the sets we built were all period sets and everything like that, just to kind of go back and, and into those periods and kind of feel that was really fun to play as and well. Yeah. Lots of Kool-Aid. What's that? that? And lots of Kool Aid. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we drank lots of Kool Aid. <laughs> so much Kool -Aid. It kind of brings me into another question. It's like, since it's a period film, I know sometimes finding those particular pieces that you want in there can be a trick. Like, what was mm. the hardest thing you guys really wanted in there that you really couldn't find? Oh, man, I think we got really lucky because mm -hmm. our film's a small film that really is only several locations, and we could really build up those sets, and our production designer, Amy Holmberg, just got together. I, when I walked in the sets, I was just like, I feel like I'm in the 60s and 70s. We had one exterior shot that Alex scored a old car yeah. for, and that was like, all right, this is the 70s. I'm good. That's well, all we need here. We shot the film in Atlanta, and there's a uh, weird neighborhood 
with all these like really, you know like 60s modern houses mm -hmm. so we were just like knocking on doors and we found this like really great like a-frame house and mm -hmm. you know just walking up you look in the windows and see they were all into like 60s modern furniture and we like knock on the door and the person who was casting the movie like opened and was like oh hey we we're like oh great you're this is your house. We're <laughs> shooting here now. And, and we Sucker. Did. It was I mean, thrill. All, all, we, all we really yeah. brought in was, what, a rug and that picture. Yeah. A rug and a picture. Yeah, a rug yeah. and a It was picture. already uh, decorated everything else like was it was the 60s. already there. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I figured you guys were going to be like, you know what? We were scouring like auction websites, things like that. We needed this one no. specific thing. No. And no, yeah, our production designer works on television shows and movies, and she just, yeah, she knocked it out of the park. It was right. amazing. I did like that you included 60 Minutes and the Anchor's outfit. That was <laughs> that must have been a hoot. Here, we need you to wear this. It just it looks so CBS 670s television. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, did you? Where did you guys find that outfit? That's another thing. Karen Freed's our costume designer, and she put together all these great 60s and 70s outfits. And that one was very specific to have this sort of 60 Minutes style interview and she, it almost looks like a superhero costume and when she's standing up straight it has a wonder woman belt that goes around it it's amazing <laughs> you want that belt it's i was amazing. actually thinking where can i get it <laughs> <laughs> so you, had, you did a lot of scouring was there any point where you, you guys were like okay we found this one location did you guys i know with atlanta it's constantly under construction and building mm -hmm. did you guys have to get a little pressure i know some things with some places they get like Okay, we're about to do construction. We need to hurry up and do production now. We actually shot most of it on sets, which we okay. made, which yeah. we were very fortunate to have. We had two locations that were exterior, but we built an entire hotel room from the 60s, like a penthouse 60s hotel room, and we built a log cabin all on a sound stage. It shot probably about 75% of the movie on sets. So, so we're about to, uh, to run out of time, actually. Um, so where, where are you guys premiering? Are you guys premiering here in Austin tonight? Yeah. We're um, actually on Monday at okay. 9 o'clock at the Vimeo Theater. You can see The Arbalist, and then we have two additional screenings uh, uh, after that. And if you guys definitely should definitely watch it, if, like, for some reason they, they are watching this on YouTube, where can they find out either where they can go to see it other places or when they're going to be able to get their hands on it? Well, we'll be playing the Atlanta Film Festival after this. We're all from Atlanta. Um, and you can just check our Facebook, which is The Arbalist Film Facebook, and our Twitter it's also just the Arbalist. All right. Mm -hmm. So, guys, we got to go. Next one's up. I won't tell you what it is because it's going to be a surprise, but see you guys in a bit. Oh, no, close your teeth. Grit your teeth like a grill. <laughs> I will carry you myself. Do it. Do it. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Yeah.